This is a story about people coming to 1515 and finding a unique space for unique performances. And um, that's part of why so many people made phone calls and sent emails to the uh, CEOs at uh, Citigroup um, because they have a very, very strong passion about this place. So at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, bring up Chris Jessic, Jasek, uh and his son Max, and the attorney. And Chris's attorney, Jerry Goldberg, and, um, and Bartos Komar. And um, what you see before you is the team that worked so hard um, at organizing Save 1515. Um, everybody had a different role to play, um, and we didn't all know each other until about three weeks ago. Some people, they knew each other much longer than that, obviously, but some of us only got involved in this three weeks ago and worked with people and got to know people in that two week, those three weeks. It's the most, one of the most intense experiences and the most wonderful experiences I've ever had. So, and thank you for all being a part of it. It wasn't just us, it was everybody who contributed something to this. So, fantastic, everybody. You know, all the shows that I've done over the years, I've never been in front of Mike when the show was on. You know, my job was always somewhere else. I, um, I don't want to start crying. <laughs> um, until last June, I tried to work it out on my own. And um, I was evident I wasn't going to be able to do that. To community um, friends, two people in particular recommended that I talk with Jerry Goldberg. And if it hadn't started with that, I wouldn't be here. Um, we had a good argument, a fair argument, and um, we couldn't prevail. The, the bottom line is this property is worth more to them than, than what I owe, and they can make money on it. And um, two weeks ago yesterday, I, uh, at Jerry and other people's suggestion, told the story again. Uh, what's happened in the last two weeks is absolutely amazing. And it, all of you guys, and because of Max, we're forever grateful. shout out to another woman who's here today, Razia Curtis. And Razia was the first woman in Detroit, the first homeowner in Detroit that challenged HUD, uh, the Housing and Urban Development, who was violating its own regulations by refusing to give people facing foreclosure an opportunity to stay in their home and eventually repurchase that home uh, through special laws they have. And Razia was the first case that challenged this both in the court and in the community with the support of the Moratorium Now Coalition. And literally, dozens of people since her case who have been victimized by, by the federal government and, and by the, along with the banks now are in their homes because of what the precedent that Razia said. And I think that's what this fight's about. We, we're, we're fighting for everyone. You know, it's been an honor to get to know Chris. I didn't really get to know people. You know, we've all both been in the progressive movement for many years. We got to know each other in June, and it's been a pleasure fighting for Chris. And in the court, and we were able to, to stave it off for a period of time. But as Chris said, as in many of these cases, the courts are not the friends of the people, the courts are the friends of the banks. And, uh, and what really is determinative in these struggles is when the people mobilize. And, and, and we've won that in many cases before. Uh, I've worked with Moratorium called Now Coalition for the last five years, and literally every time we've taken to the streets and hit the banks, we've been able to keep someone in their homes. And, and in Chris's case, it was the joint work of Moratorium Now, along with Occupy for Homes and Occupy Detroit and People Before Banks, 
and put the word out, and that's what won this victory and brought City to the table and, and won an agreement that's going to allow this place to stay open, serving the community like it belongs. I just want to say one other thing, though. As important as this victory and every victory that we win in, and just in the last week, three, two weeks, there have been at least, in the last month anyway, there have been at least three cases where through demonstrations, homeowners have been able to stay in their home. The Henrys, who we hope will be uh, securing an agreement very soon to stay in their home. Uh, Kyra Williams, who also fought cities in her home. <coughs> and I think what it shows is sometimes we can almost underestimate the power of our own movement. The banks know what they're doing to the people. And they see the Occupy movement. They see the spread of the struggle all over the country. And they fear it. And we got to get stronger and mobilize more because we are the majority. We also we are the 99 percent, and they're afraid of us. And that's really what this shows. I just want to end by saying, as important as each individual victory is, there's going to be five million foreclosures in the next two years. Five million. We're not going to win and, and stop every one of them one by one. We need political action to put a halt on all these foreclosures. Our organization, the Moratorium Now Coalition to Stop Foreclosures, Utilities, Shutoffs, and Evictions has been fighting for a moratorium for the last five years, a law like we had in the 1930s in Michigan, when for five years the banks couldn't take people's homes. Well, right now, the federal government owns 75% of the loans. It's Fannie Mae that's evicting the Henrys. They're used, to, in most cases, it's the federal government through Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD that is tossing people out of their homes. And because the federal government controls these loans, the president has the absolute authority, not just to announce some lukewarm programs or some criminal investigation that's 10 years too late, but to put a moratorium, a halt, on every single foreclosure in this country. And we are organizing a conference. We're inviting those who've been fighting through direct action to come to Detroit on March 31st to join together to strengthen this movement and to strengthen this demand to win a moratorium that's going to stop every single foreclosure to put a halt to foreclosures while we work on a solution where we reduce the principal on these homes to what they're really worth and where every human being has the right to housing guarantee. So join us in this fight. We salute everybody for this victory and keep up the struggle. Um, so uh, there are a lot of people who aren't on this stage who, who deserve a lot of thanks for doing a lot of hard work to make this happen. So I just want to thank you guys, uh, everyone in Occupy Our Homes, in uh, Occupy Detroit, more than yeah. now, people who banks, uh, UAW Local 600, uh, lots of folks that aren't on the stage who did a lot of work. Uh, and I guess, uh, you know, this victory was, uh, in terms of organizing anyway, probably one of the quicker ones. And I think that's a reflection on two things. Uh, one, Chris has a lot of friends. Uh, we, we barely even like got started with, with this whole effort, uh, with, with the organizing side of it anyway. And uh, Citibank basically freaked out. Uh, and, and I think that's a reflection on Chris and, and, and how much people love and, and respect him. Uh, yeah. Uh, two, um, when Main Street stands up to Wall Street, we win. That's right. And um, so um, anyone who, who knows anyone who is facing this situation, uh, a similar situation like Chris, um, tell them to, uh, to stand up. Uh, the time for, for homeowners to suffer silently through foreclosure is over. Uh, have your friends, have your families visit OccupyOurHomes.org and uh, let us see what we can do to help them. Thank you. All right. Uh, the one other community um, that played a very active role in this is the arts community. And um, a big shout out belongs to them. Um, people I never met, people I never saw, put Facebook, a Facebook posting together, which spread like wildfire. Um, uh, blogs were posted. Uh, Encore, uh, online newsletters, Encore was one, theater was another, 
um, and I, I can't remember the names of all of them, but this was a social media phenomenon. This is how the word spread, and that is mostly, it was a huge part of the arts community and their support. Uh, musicians, dancers, uh, singers, poets, um, people across a wide spectrum stood up. Um, and when they knew that Chris was in danger of losing 15-15, they wanted to help. Um, Chris was very private about this. It took him a long time to do it. But when he started to ask for help, people rallied to his support. And it's an amazing um, statement about the community, the arts community here in Detroit. So big shout out to the arts community. Um, Bartos talked about the impact of uh, phone calling and emailing to the uh, to Citibank. Um, you got to figure within five days of us starting this email and phone campaign, they uh, Citibank was calling saying, "Oh, we want to work out a deal." You know, for years they didn't want to do anything, right, right. but now they wanted to work out a deal. And I mean, they actually said someone who claimed to be higher up <laughs> in Citigroup said, "You must have a lot of friends." Uh, Again, that's a testament to all of you who are here. Um, and they also said, defending themselves, um, you know, we're a really big bank, and you know, we don't really know the individuals who have mortgages with us. Um, you know, we don't know people's individual stories, but you know, when we hear the story, then of course we have to respond. Well, that's the whole problem, right? Right. It's right. the big banks who've gotten billions of money from the federal government and still aren't helping the man on the street. Right. Um, still aren't helping people like Chris. And they only helped Chris because they would have been embarrassed if they hadn't. They knew that we were going to hold a press conference. And so, you know, bad PR is not what they wanted to have. So, again, what, what Jerry said, what Bartos says, put pressure on people. Don't let people suffer in silence. Encourage people to be able to do this um, and work with them. Um, People stepped up for Chris, and you can step up for other people. There's plenty of organizations in the Detroit area that are working on this. Uh, no person should have to go through this by themselves. Okay.